he used that expression that he'd be a millionaire. And I'm sure a lot of us in life, we had did things in a way that we regret, but then everything happened for a reason. We Everything that happened in our life is for a learning purpose. Amen. All that happened is for a learning purpose. And I, uh, Roman 8 and 28 did express that. That's where my, not where my context coming from, but it did express that uh, for we know who that the Christian know, people that eventually may not have started off being a Christian, but it eventually they become a Christian and they look back and stretch over their life and then uh, they analyze it. You can analyze your life in different ways. Everybody do. But it's better to, in a positive way and see how you could benefit even from your past. He expressed the things that if he, uh, he would be a millionaire. Uh, he thought about the things he lost again, you know, and I just thank God that, uh, you know, uh, everything comes, there's some good somewhere. That, that, that's what he's saying. Even as bad people, there's some good somewhere. And even as good people, there's some bad also somewhere. But I thank God for God. How do we he look at things? His grace and mercy fills in for me not being so good. Y'all, y'all know that. We I want to talk from Hebrew today. And I just thank God. You know, you in your life, you come to different points in your life and that you want to be sure that you're sure that who you are you want to be sure that you're sure that the time you're putting in now is a positive and legitimate time that's going to last and i know you know you know on for god you stand amen that you won't fall for anything else let me, let me read Hebrews 6 and 1 here. I thank God for Jesus and thank God for all of you that present on the line, which indicate your concern of where you are and what you are doing. And as that songster indicate in Revelation in his song that he won't do things the same way no more. You know, and me too. Yeah. Hear what chapter six says. It said, therefore, from the King James Version, it said, therefore, mean, therefore, mean that something happened before this that we should know about. You can read the rest of it before we get to six. But six, uh, like a, acts a conjunction here. It, uh, it said, therefore, leaving. I read what therefore is therefore in the prior chapter before six years. And he said, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. He said, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Amen. And it's so much to this, we can never finish this in one sermon, one or two sermon. It always would be more, no matter what happened. And listen, listen. It it means that there is always more in life that we could get, no matter what pinnacle we use in life. And we should use our pinnacle, a time frame, or you know, where different places we get to as a point of going on. And I see here, it's said leaving the principles. There are principles in life. And principle are looked at different from each one of us in a way. But my context of principle is uh, from where I start from, my basic principle, from my starting point. You remember when you first accept Christ? Well, this right here, he actually speaking to the Hebrew, this I think is Paul, 
he is speaking to the Hebrew people who were scattered abroad and them seeking for freedom in their life and betterment in their life and knowing that there's something always better and don't get locked into where they was. And I want to read to you about that a minute before we go on. And the theme in here, the doctoral, the doctrinal passage reveal the purpose of the book. It was written with a twofold intent to confirm Jewish Christian by showing that Judaism had come to an end through the fulfillment by Christ of the whole purpose of the law. And I forgot I'm on screen here. Let me look straight at the screen. And it said, and showing that Judaism had come to an end and through the fulfillment uh, by Christ of the whole purpose of the law. Secondly, the hortatory passage showed that the writer had in view the danger ever present to Jewish professed believer and updating unto anyone that confesses Christ. Jew, professed believer of either lapsing back into Judaism, lapsing back to where you started at, uh, just upgrading some language a little bit, you know? Ah, of pause and shot of true faith in Jesus Christ. True faith means that you seeing your faith through. That's true faith. True faith help advance your profession that you will possess what you profess. And um, uh, it is clear from the Acts that even the strongest of the believers in Palestine were held in a strange mangling of Judaism and Christianity. And that snare would be especially apt to entangle professed Christian among us, the Jews of the dispersion, and even us now. Amen. He was just addressing them in that time. And at the same time, with revelation here, it will address us now, even now. So the key word here is better. Yeah. It's better. See, leaving the principle from where I started from. And we just, we actually, from our cultural point of view, we just actually celebrate like a day of independence. And I just want to talk a little bit here, a day of independence in which I, uh, I actually take it personal, uh, what we call July the 4th. See, on July the 4th, the Continental Congress formally adopted the Declaration of Independence, which had, which had be, been written largely by Jefferson. Though the vote of actual independence took place on July the 2nd, from then on, the 4th became the day that was celebrated as the birth of American independence from under the bondage of the British Great Britain. It marks the day the Declaration of Independence was adopted and the United States officially became its own nation, America. Amen. What I'm pointing to is to say today that uh, you have to actually understand the history and understand the natural in order to, so the spiritual can be revealed to us. And I'm just startled. Uh, I wake up at night sometime thinking about it. Amen. Uh, as, as I get older, God shows me more and shows me a purpose. You've got to have a purpose of why well. you do what you do in this earth here. And we as people, we come from 
I have a sign that I made up and had printed up for that day because I see we will celebrate from our culture point of view. Yeah. And that sign is a focus of uh, our gratitude from across the sea to America. Amen. And I, I, what I want to focus on is that uh, I can't stay there from the context of I will not be satisfied. That's what makes me can't stay there. And I think Paul, uh, in his writing here, he wanted to encourage, he wanted to encourage, amen, those that was, uh, was dispersed. And sometimes God take us out in order to bring us in. Sometimes he take us out of our familiar area, uh, familiar environment in order to get our attention. I do believe that uh, God allow some situation to happen and always do. Roman 8 and 28, so we know that for all things work together. We know it's painful in some situation that happened, but God never leave his people alone, those that embrace him. Everything that happened, he let it be for our good that it will bring us into the knowledge of him. And that big letter there in that uh, language, they said, therefore, therefore, in the prior verses, what took place in very short word, we understand that type of conjunction is that means something happened. Jesus died, amen to let us know there's something better than where we were before. That's what he come for. He come to bless us and help us, those who would embrace him fully. Amen. Uh, I mean, I know it's tough and hard, troublesome sometimes, the things that happen. But God allowed them to happen for our good, when, especially when we embrace him. He, he will take us through no matter what happened. The wind, rain, and storm, God always will bring us through them who trust him. And uh, uh, so the mold of this is that uh, uh, the acknowledgement here and gratitude he gives things in all things through my trial, things that happen. One lady didn't have a car one time. She didn't have a car. I heard it. Someone told it. So she keep thanking God for a car to get to church because she had to catch the bus. And because of that, somebody asked her, Say, where's your car? See, I hear you keep thinking God. She said, it's on the way. She had enough faith. She said, it's on the way. Amen. And so you got to thank God. You got to, like the scripture said, call those things. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know. God is increasing my faith because he said, faith coming by hearing and hearing. All the things I don't have, amen, and the things that I hope for, amen. We are Christian. We is God. What's in his people? The spirit, your hope, is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his precious blood. You have to have some hope. You have to have a cause, a purpose of why you live here in this earth. God want to hear from his people. 
Oh my God, he said, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, he teaches that prayer. We, and sometimes you rarely see that happen, but that's the prayer. He want to, you know, here in earth, the resemblance what in heaven and our prayer will be answered. Yeah, God will answer. Uh, see, uh, our prayer become less when we only pray and have no hope. Our prayer mean, our prayer should put us in the action and increase our faith and our hope of what we are praying for that will come to pass. He tell them, no, when you pray, don't pray amiss. Amen. So, and because of that, he said, therefore, Leave in the principle. You got to seek. If you don't seek, you can't move. If you don't seek, you can't find things. They just don't automatically happen. We uh the object of our faith. But he says, say, say, seek. Well, I'll put it this way. He said, ask. Huh? Seek. X, A, X, S, seek, and, uh, and K is not. S, all that wrapped up in that one word, them three words, when you look at the revelation and is it, it applicable to our life, our well being? And uh, that's why I just read, I, 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 I can't stay where I was. And because of that, I'm talking through the context of I will not be satisfied. I will not be satisfied. I can't. And then when I see that scripture jump out at me like that, and I just wanted to share that and to focus on the day of independence from our culture point of view and where we start. Everyone should have a focus. Every culture should have a focus. Every culture should have a meaning for why we do what we do. My thing is this on the Day of Independence that we celebrate, I did not want to bring people together just to eat and have a full stomach and go back uninformed. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. This is not the end of this. It's just a beginning of this. God going to take me places that I never, and he's taken me places I've never been before. And so I just want to make sure I don't live just to exist in this earth. God didn't make us just to exist. Ella Burns did that. He didn't make us to barely exist. He make us, oh God, to be a light according to the scripture. He said, you are the light of the world that sit on the hill and can't be high. Uh, hallelujah. God put light in me and you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, to take us places we never been, to let us talk like we never talked before. Huh? And then 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away. Oh, oh hallelujah. That's what uh, Hebrews 6 indicate to his people. That's the boys I hear that don't stay the same place where we were. You're a new preacher. All things pass away and all things become new, or fresh and new. It ain't new to God, but it's new to the people. And man, as you see the light, you're supposed to walk in the light. Who the light is? Jesus is that light. Amen. As far as we have come and uh, just wanted to reflect a little, amen. And it's good to know some parts of history because when you know some history, you could appreciate a future. When you know some history of where you, where you was, you personally may not have been back there, but your people has been back there. Jesus said, what you do unto my little one, you do to me also. When you know the history, it gives you, it gives your life now some validity, some strength to 
It gives you some purpose and some cause to live on. It gives you purpose and cause to press on the accelerator. Yeah. Amen. I cannot. My text discourages me. My text scares me. I can't stay there. From that context of I will not be satisfied. When you get satisfied, you have reached as far as you're going. Hebrews and leave the principle of the doctrine. Let us go on to perfection, go on to maturity, not let again that that works of repentance. Don't go back there. Don't go back no more. You've been there. I'm trying to get from there. I'm trying to make some distance between me and where I start. That's my principle. That's my principle is where I started. I pray and hope you locked in on this. I pray and hope you get some of this. Praise God. Amen. From whom all blessings flow. So I just have to just calm down a little bit here. I'm so stirred here. Oh, praise God. Yeah, so uh, it raises a critical question. I remember Frederick, Frederick Douglass had encouraged us through his uh, famous speech and the question that brought his speech out so, uh, had become a nation, a whole nation story. And the question says this, what to the slave is the 4th of July? He was the particular one and I read he was a Republican, but yet he was an advocate advocate for justice and social economic and he noticed the the declaration of independence and he noticed that and he refused outrightly and then to celebrate it and so he gave a keynote address at an end at an Independence Day celebration and asked, what to the slave is the 4th of July? Amen. I, I just wanted to help us a little bit because I do not want these days and these years to pass and think they're just only days and years. They has meaning. And what qualifies me is that I look back in history and I see how far we had come and how far we was yet in this country over 400 years. When I look at that and I asked, Lord, I said, you know, and my question, I told someone the other day, I said, well, I want my part in the struggle or success long as it's not zero. I said it, I jotted down and make a little note because I didn't want the devil to steal that. Amen. And so I want you to know that I, I don't I don't fly around like I'm a heavenly angel because I live here and God want me here for my time. And when I want my time, I want to really take advantage of my time while I'm here. And I thought maybe Douglas wanted to stir the consciousness and awaken the nation and challenge those who oppose to a godly given to every individual their, their rights to be who they choose to be. Now, whether that's zero or what is all up to you, but I'm not choosing zero. And God don't want anyone to choose zero. If you wind up at zero, you wind up with zero is because you maybe you don't have the courage to search out who you are and what God expects from every individual he make. He expects and much more Christian. My faith requires every Christian got some faith. Even people who don't even is not Christian, 
they got faith. And people much more so is a Christian got faith in God. So my faith requires something from me it, and from every individual. In the speech, Douglas acknowledged the founding fathers of America. He gave that speech. And the architect of Declaration of Independence for their commitment to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And I think somewhere Dr. King possibly could have read this to help formulate his famous speech on Washington, D.C. I got to talk about real life, y'all. I'm not an angel flying around with wings yet. I ain't in heaven yet. I live here in a real world here. I live in a real world with mean people and good people. I live in a world where Satan is running rapid. I think uh, the preacher, this visit here of a month or two ago, uh, uh, Dr. We was at uh, uh, a meeting at a church and he said this, I'll remember his name later. Uh, he said, possibly we who are not getting any way, we possibly may be going up. He used an analogy. We might be going up the elevator who is on the way down in society. Amen. We, we was at that. And I think uh, Reverend Foster was there too. And I, we got a tape on that. And so, and, 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 that, and we have to change that. We have to change. We may be on the wrong side of the elevator. Maybe we on the maybe we on the side that coming down. Society, and we look in society in the calamity. Society is on the way down, but then the Christian is accountable. The Christian has a, a incredible responsibility. It's to get on the elevator and going up. Amen. That Jesus Christ increase. So Hebrews six and one said, therefore leaving the principle. Christ had come and set us free. Whom the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. Some people may be still bound, but we got to press on. Uh, Paul said, forgetting them things that uh, behind and pressing toward the mark, the going forward of, of a high calling in Jesus Christ. And church, we must do that. So Douglas went on and said, Fellow citizens, I'm not wanting in respect for the fathers of the Republic, the, the singers of the Declaration of Independence, because they had a lot of celebration going on that. It was a great celebration, and they held it high. And, and he, he admired him. You're a brave man. They were great men, too. Great enough to give Fram to a great age. It does not often happen to a nation to raise at one time, such a number of truly great men. The point from which he said, a point, I'm quoting, the point from which I am compelled to view them is not certainly the most favorable. And yet I cannot contemplate their great deeds with less than admiration. There were statesmen, patriots, and heroes, and for the good they did, and the principle they contend for. I will unite it with you to honor their memory. Quote, Douglas stated that the nation founders were great men for an ideal freedom, but in doing so, he bring awareness to the hypocrisy of their ideal by the existence of slavery on America's soil. That means it don't belong here. It was here, but it does not belong here. Amen. Quote, Douglas continues to interrogate the meaning of the Declaration of Independence to enslave African American, experiencing grave inequality and injustice. Amen. I pray and hope that you receive uh, this sermon that I'm doing. I uh, pray and hope because God had stirred me so much to what good am I? if I'm not informative enough. Well, if I'm not informative enough. He said, fellow citizen, pardon me, allow me to ask why I am called upon to speak today. 
What have I or those I represent to do with your national independence? Are you the great principle of political freedom, of a natural justice? Remember, they had just had break free from the British and was established as one country themselves, America. They were celebrating this. You can understand why Frederick Douglass wrote or uh, addressed this thing. And what he said, uh, are the great principle of political freedom and of natural justice embodied in the Declaration of Independence? I'm tired of going along me, myself, with just a norm. I don't know about you. I don't want to be just uh, this existing in the world. As I told you before, I, I will say it and I will say it again. I want my part in the struggle or success, long as it's not zero. Mm -hmm. Therefore, therefore I call upon us to bring our humble offering to the national altar, to the world, uh, to confess the benefit and express devout gratitude for the blessing resulting from your independence to us. Watch what he said. I say it with a sad sense. This is his famous quote that really stood out. He said, I say it with a sad sense of disparity between us. I am not included within the pale of glorious anniversary. Your high independence only reveal an immeasurable distance between us. Amen. Would to God, both for your sakes and ours, that an affirmative answer could be truly returned to these questions. Then would my task be light and my burden easy and delightful. For who is there so cold that a nation's sympathy could not warm him? Huh? Listen. So, who so? Obdurate and debt to the claims of gratitude that would not thankfully acknowledge such priceless benefit. Who saw so good and selfish that would not give his voice to swell the hallelujahs of a nation jubilee when the chains of substitute had been torn from his limb? I am not that man. In a case like that, I have to identify with him too. The dumbs might eloquently speak, and the lamb might man leap as an heart. But such is not the state of the case. I say it with a sad sense of disparity between us. I am not included within the pale glorious anniversary. Your high independence only revealed the immeasurable distance between us. The blessing in which you this day rejoice are not enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not me. This is what he said. The sunlight that brought light and healing to you has brought stripe and death to me. This fourth, Ju this fourth July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, but I must mourn because it has, it gives no light to me. It is remembered. This is one Douglas most poignant speech. Amen. I, my text, say, I will, I can't stay there. The Hebrew six and one teaches us anyone who embraces God and looking for some big and light of hope in my life, you know, uh, economically and spiritually, they both go together. I'm so sorry. I don't want to be so heavenly bound and I'm no earthly good. God didn't, that's not what his meaning was in this world. His meaning is that we, he taught Adam and Eve to replenish the earth, bring, be fruitful in the earth. Most Christian, what, when I was coming up, can I tell you this? When I was coming up, it was emulated to us at the time 
that you're not supposed to be wealthy or have things on earth. This is, this is, it's, I think that's bad theology. Bad theology. Amen. He said, replenish the earth, go on, do it, multiply, be fruitful in the earth. Amen. As we talk on the rich uh, and the poor this morning, amen, you got to understand and you cannot let anything you have stand in the way of a Christian responsibility. You can't. The rich man allow his richness and his wealth to blind him to Lazarus' need, laying by his gate. He couldn't see. The only time he saw Lazarus is when he couldn't do nothing about what he see. Couldn't do anything about it. Amen. My encouragement today is that while we are here in the earth, amen, do like the man, the poem said, footprint in the sand. When you do go, if you've been here, when you leave, make sure someone know you were here. Do enough here that they could see your footprint in the sand and they don't see you no more. They say, he been here because here he is track here. Amen. I, I'd like to talk about reality in life. And that's what Jesus come to do. He used parable to awaken his listeners, to awaken them to reality, to awaken them to the responsibility, to awaken them of where they are, whatever culture you live in. You may have not lived back that way, Abraham, but it doesn't matter what way you are. Amen. It doesn't matter what time. He died for all. He died for you. He died for me. It doesn't matter what time you live in. He's a God of time. He's everywhere, omnipresent. Amen. He could be there and here at the same time. I thank God for him. He's forever present with you and I. And I am so grateful. So that's my delivering sermon for me to bless me and pray and hope that it bless you. It's sad that I preach and I don't get blessed out of my preaching. If anybody, if anybody get blessed, if nobody get blessed, it should be me. Amen. I thank God. God has sent no message to me to, to, to give somebody else and nothing for me. No. Amen. I, I see, hey, I see crumbs, so I know there's a bread somewhere because crumbs come from bread. You can't get crumbs when there's bread nowhere. Bread is somewhere. And so I'm calling those things, and I got faith in God. That God is who he say he is, and if he is not who he say he is, my, is most miserable for me, most miserable for any Christian, and put their trust and hope in God's word. I thank God for his word. His word is true. I believe all his word. If anything you don't want to believe, you don't want to believe that there's brimstone and hell and fire, but make sure you believe God's word. And if you believe God's word, you don't have to worry about the brimstone and fire. Glory to God. Don't be scared to trust God. Don't trust God just because the brimstone and fire. Trust God because God is who he say he is. I, I, I just can't stay where I was. I was in places. I'm not there anymore. And then you got to speak victory because words is power. You talk about victory, then you're going to start having victory. 
if you talk about how you can't do something, you'll never do it. Amen. You want to, if you speak can't, and if you see doubt, that's what you're going to get. You will not move. You will stay in the same place you were in. I remember I told a little story about an elephant was tied to a tree, a neighbor, and a neighbor come and asked his neighbor, actually the other day, he said, why don't you turn that elephant loose? He said, why don't, why don't you? And the man took the key to chain, take it off. The next day, the neighbor coming again and say, why don't you turn that in? He said, I, I, I turned the key and took it loose. And he said, show me, because the elephant is still standing there. He said, did you? He said, let me see. He went over, he took the man over to his seat, and I unlocked the key off the chain, and the chain is laying there. The elephant was still standing there because the elephant didn't know he was loose. So make sure you know your surrounding. Make sure you know what God wants for you. Make sure you know what God expects from you. He wants the best for you. So I can't stay there. If the son of man set me free, I want to leave the place where I was, like T. Bruce said, therefore leaving the principle of the doctrine, let us go on to perfection, not laying again to of Jesus Christ, not laying again the dead works, because God has made me free, and I'm free in these. Amen. Whom the Son of Man sing a song, say, I'm free, I'm free. No more chain holding me. My soul is resting, because it's a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am free. Thank you for listening. I'm done with that right now. God bless you. Let's have a prayer here. Oh, God, thank you for, for getting me through what you told me. Help, thank you for helping me humble enough, oh, God, to listen to your voice, oh, God, to echo the word from heaven. Oh, God, as an encouragement to us, regardless of where we are in our life, help us to look and see the light when we see the light, oh, God. Amen. We must walk in that light. We thank you, oh, God, for touching me, oh, God, and taking me places I've never been. Thank you for taking the fear from me, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you. We know preaching is risky because everybody won't receive it, but, but, but it's not for everyone. It's for those, oh God, who open their heart and they want they don't want to stay where they were. So we thank you, oh God, for not being satisfied where I am. Thank you for keeping me in a seeking more, oh God, and asking more, oh God, and knocking on the door more. We thank you for that, for blessing, oh God. We thank you for touching your people, oh God. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Thank you. Oh. Don't forget, you can help us continue to spread the good news by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's PIBC, Pentecost Inspirational Baptist Church. Like, follow, share, and subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed week.